Hello everybody and welcome to my 18th Microsoft Access 2013 tutorial. And this tutorial is going to show you how you use the if statements in your build function. So if statements just allow you to control uh, to kind of flow between your functions. So if I just show you it's probably going to be easier than explaining it. So let's go into our query design and I'm going to add in items and sales uh, and link them by item number, excellent uh, and then I'm going to go into my build menu so let's say I just want to say whether or not a sale is a high value sale so let's just put a sale value colon, so call the field sale value uh, and then I just want it to have a little bit of text that says whether it's a high or low sale. So we put in our if function. So you, you call it if in this. In other, most of the rest of the worlds you use just if, but for some reason Microsoft Access calls it if. If anyone knows why that is, drop it in the comments to be interested. Anyway, so we need to give it an expression. So this is just uh, the comparison between two uh, different uh, items. So we need to give it a uh, true or false statement. So I'm going to ask, is my item cost higher than free? So item, items, exclamation mark, item cost greater than free, or three pounds. But we don't put the pounds in because uh, the value of three pounds is free. Uh, and then we press comma. And then we have our true part parameter. So this is what we want to return with our if statement if the if this if this statement's true. So if item cost is greater than three. So we want to put that as high value. And then another comma. And then what returns if it's false? So we want that to be low value. And then close bracket to finish our if statement. So we have a comparative statement uh, and we then have high value and then low value. Press OK. And then when we run this, go into our data sheet view, you'll see they're all coming up as low value. And that's because I've put none of them higher than four pounds. So let's put that one as four pounds. Uh, and then close that table down. And then let's just run this one again. And you'll see now the ones that are four pound have all gone to high value. And let's just stick it over a couple of things in there just for kicks, uh, so that then it actually looks like a proper query. So we've got high value chocolate cake sale on the fifth. We've got high value chocolate cake sale on the fifteenth, etc., etc. Uh, so that is very useful. Uh, I also just want to show you how you can use it to avoid. Uh, certain errors so let's go to let's close this one down save it as sale levels and let's create ourselves a new one uh, items sales close so let's say we want to do the uh, item cost divided by the quantity so and I just want to go into my sales and I want to change one of the quantities to zero uh, which apparently I'm not very good at. There we go. Press close. Uh, and so when I do go into my build menu and I do uh, costing, and it doesn't, the, the calculation isn't one you probably would do because you don't want to do item cost by quantity, but I just want to show you what happens when you divide by zero. So items dot item cost divided by sales. dot quantity press ok uh, and then when we go and run this it's going to give us some um, uh, div, uh, div 0 here uh, we don't want a div 0 because div zeros are annoying and make other functions mess up so let's go back into our design view and I'm going to eliminate the div 0 using a if statement so we're going to put i if to start off with uh, and then we want to test whether or not quantity is zero. So let's do sales dot quantity equals zero. 
then we just want to put it as zero and otherwise we want it to do the normal formula. So we've got our expression here that's testing whether or not sales quantity is zero. If it is zero, then we don't want to run that expression because it's going to run up, give us our div zero. So let's just fill it in with zero instead. Uh, and then if it's, if it's false and it's not zero, then it means it's fine to do the calculation. So we just do the calculation. And let's run this. And now you notice that our div zero is just turned to a normal zero, which is exactly what we wanted. Uh, and let's just save that as an eliminating a zero. Uh, and that's going to be it for this tutorial. Uh, if you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments or there'll be a link in the description to our website slash forum so you can put anything you want on that forum. Uh, a little bit better if your, your query is a little bit more complex on the forum because I can post uh, examples back to you and things like that, which is more useful. Uh, please, please, please subscribe if you're liking these tutorials uh, and I hope to catch you in the next tutorial.